Hey guys, it's Faye from Solar Flow and I am back with another video. Today's topic is a deep dive behind the veil energy read on a missing young woman by the name of Maya Millette. I'm going to be looking into the circumstances surrounding her disappearance, what led up to it, and who I believe is responsible for it. So if this sounds like an interesting topic to you, please stick around. And if not, I will catch you at another video. So first and foremost, yes, I am still on my true crime kick and if you are done if you're over it go ahead comment down below you can say no mas fe no mas and then you can also tell me what topics you would like to see next and this was actually one of the questions from uh, last month's ask me anything and at the time that i was doing the video it was running a little bit long and i was like mm, i don't know if we're gonna have time to do this i'm gonna save it for another day so here we are. It is another day and a perfect day to look into the disappearance of this young woman. So let's dive in. So um, as soon as I started looking into the energy of Maya, her energy came in very, very strong in tandem with her husband, Larry. And what was shown to me was that early on when these two got together, they had a very sweet, sexy, and loving relationship. They were also quite young when they got together. Not like 10, um, but I think they were like maybe upper teenagers, maybe like 18, 19, 20, something like that. And it was a very, very young and relaxed kind of sexy kind of a love, the way you can only experience love at that age, you know, with like kind of that reckless abandon because you don't really have that many other like actual life responsibilities. And they both were in love in that same way with one another. Um, and because Maya was so young, she actually was missing a lot of the red flags that came with Larry. I think many of us have probably been there. <laughs> we're young, we're in love, we're falling in love with reckless abandon and we're not paying attention to all the red flags along the way. And this is very much the case with Maya as well. So Larry was prone to moodiness. He was um, a bit controlling of her overall, and he could sometimes be selfish and he could sometimes snap at her. But she was not even aware that these were necessarily red flags, so she kind of proceeded anyway, and they ended up getting married. Now, at the time that they got married, Maya was very free-spirited and very young-hearted. And Larry was very much the center of her world. Again, young, in love, not a lot of other responsibilities. Really, really devoted her herself to him wholeheartedly and whole intentionality-wise as well. And even at the point that they started to have a family, they, Maya was still somewhat insulated where Larry was still the center of her universe. He was the center of her solar system, so to say. And then the young children that they had were just kind of like orbiting around them as well. But Larry was very much still the center of her universe. So there were not a lot of um, issues when they were newly married, even when they had kids. Because sometimes, you know, kids can really put a strain on an already unhealthy relationship. But due to the fact that they were still relatively young at this time, it really didn't strain the relationship in any way. However, things started to change as their kids started to get older because the needs of her children were changing and it was requiring a different version of Maya to show up. So this is not just, oh, I can take my kids to mommy and me. You know, what, how, what is that? Is, this is an expression, little kids, little problems, big kids, big problems. So at the time that her kids were starting to grow up, the needs of her family were starting to shift. And that was therefore calling upon a different version of Maya to show up so that she could best facilitate the needs of her family. And her attention was starting to be diverted away from Larry. He did not like that. So now this was a responsible mother version of Maya that was showing up for Larry and not the young, sexy, free spirited, I'm going to put the kids to bed and have a glass of wine and then we'll go frolic in the bed together. No, 
she was showing up differently. She was really evolving and growing into herself and growing into her womanhood and growing into her role as a mother as well. So Larry wanted the old version that Maya had been. But Maya wanted a new version of Larry because Larry was not evolving with her. She was growing, she was maturing, she was becoming responsible, but Larry, she was like Maya 3.0 and Larry was still back in like Larry 1.0, thinking, I want to be the center of her universe. Why am I not the center of her universe? Not understanding that she had very real responsibilities to tend to. So she wanted him to grow up with her. He wasn't growing up with her. He wanted her to stay stagnant in young, sexy, fun-hearted version of Maya that she had been all those years ago. So there was starting to become more tension in the interpersonal dynamics between the two of them. It was almost like an energetic tug of war. And any of the changes that he would make were very transitory. They were very temporary because it wasn't congruent with who he genuinely and truly was. Again, he was Larry 1.0. She was asking him to evolve, become Larry 2.0, become Larry 3.0. And he could do it, sure, temporarily for maybe a couple of weeks or max, maybe like two months. But then he was always going to go back and revert to who he was because those changes that he was making weren't real and genuine. They were just like band-aids. I'm going to put a band-aid on this part of the relationship and then she's going to just be okay with it and we're going to fall back into the way that we were. So he was really not seeing her clearly. She, however, was seeing him more clearly. Now again, so Maya really wanted Larry to grow and evolve with her. And Larry wanted the version of Maya that he had first had when they had first met and even the Maya uh, that she was when they had first married and had younger kids. And now she was a lot more opinionated. Again, she was maturing, she was evolving, she was growing. So she was becoming a lot more opinionated. And now suddenly, you know, she's looking at Larry with like mature eyes and she's looking at him like, this is like another one of my kids. I think they had three, three, or, three or four kids together. She's looking at him and she's like, oh, so I have another kid as well. But she wanted a partnership. So she was becoming a lot more opinionated and she was starting to share a lot more of her opinions with him of how she wanted him to contribute and show up, not just as a husband to her, but to show up in the family. But here's the thing, she was asking something of him that he could not do. It's kind of like asking a tiger to change its spots. It can't. That's the blueprint of who it is. And here's something interesting I think about tigers as well. It's not actually even just their fur that is striped, it's their skin. So even if you shaved off all the tiger's fur, it would grow in exactly the same exact way as before with those stripes because it is a fundamental part of who it is. This is a fundamental expression, an energetic, what I would call an energetic expression or an energetic blue, uh, blueprint of who Larry is. He's somebody that's going to be a little bit more mature, uh, immature, He's somebody that's going to be a little bit more energetically demanding of his partner. He is somebody that's going to be a little bit controlling. And he's somebody that's going to be prone to outbursts when he doesn't get his way. Kind of like a toddler. So her requests of Larry were not unreasonable. It was just that this was something he was incapable of doing. So the strains of whatever existed in the relationship at this time continued to deepen. And they kept trying to make it work. But again, any of the requests that Maya had on Larry were transitory at best, temporary at best. He was incapable of becoming the man that she needed him to be. So 
Ultimately, despite their efforts to continue to try to make it work, they kept failing because they were very much energetically incongruent with one another. Larry wanted old Maya, Maya wanted new Larry. That's a pretty big um, bridge to try to gap. Now things took a really, really sour turn at the point that they had separated. And here's a number of reasons why. So first of all, in the time that they had separated, Maya started to see a few things about herself, which was first of all, she started to realize, hey, I can do this on my own. I don't need a Larry. And she was actually even discussing, uh, discovering that her ability to parent was easier, not because her kids weren't seeing Larry, they were, but it was because she didn't have, she was only parenting her actual kids. So she was not parenting kids plus one. So it was a lot easier for, for her to actually parent her kids. And she was also starting to discover that her own internal nervous system was starting to regulate a lot more easily because she didn't have the added uh, stress that Larry was bringing into her life. Again, he was demanding. He wanted her to be a version of herself that was no longer available. So that was causing a lot of um, internal stress that she was taking on. So she was like, hey, I feel better when I'm not with Larry. My kids um, are responding to me better. I can better parent them. And this was really like an eye-opening experience for Maya to realize she could really be on her own and she could do this on her own. But as she was now becoming Maya version 4.0, Larry was again, still not evolving. In fact, at this time that they separated, he really dug his heels in and his behavior took a turn to the downside. Because whereas Maya was feeling more in control of herself, Larry was actually feeling a lot less in control. And whereas before he had Maya in the home, that he could control. Now that she was out of the home because they were separated, he was feeling more and more out of control in himself. He didn't have somebody to, to control and that was causing a gap within his own attention. Because Maya was there before, the kids were there before. So there was always, always this other, um, these other people that he could uh, take his focus and turn it onto instead of focusing on himself. So in the absence of having his kids in the house, I think they were actually with him for a period of time and Maya had moved out. And I think a period of the time she, they were actually with her. But in the absence of him having Maya there to control, it created a void. And instead of him taking this time to really look at himself and be internally or, uh, oriented, it, if anything, dysregulated him to the point where he actually started to behave completely out of control, right? So if someone has an internal uh, locust, they have an internal thermostat, when things are happening around them, they're going to slow it down and they're going to be like, hold on. What about the circumstances that I'm in are starting to disrupt me? What is bothering me? What is feeling energetically incongruent with everything that is going on? So they will turn their attention within. Larry did not turn his attention within. The absence of Maya was actually starting to bring up all of these other unhealed wounds and unhealed traumas and unhealed parts of himself that led him to be stuck and frozen energetically at all right? He was still Larry 1.0. Why was he still Larry 1.0? There were specific traumas, uh, traumas and things that had happened to him in his childhood that remain unresolved. And he had, just like he wanted to put a bandaid on the relationship with Maya and keep trudging along, he had just put a bandaid on all of those traumas and kept trudging along. So now within, with the absence of Maya, it was bringing up 
uh, all of those traumas that had first occurred to him that were undealt with. So it was bringing up a lot of the self-worth issues that he had experienced. The feeling of helplessness, the, help, the feeling of feeling out of control, all of those things started to come up. But again, being somebody that was not going to internally focus, he continued to externally focus. So whereas before he had been controlling to Maya when she was in the house, his controlling took a different turn where he was now monitoring her every move. You could even say he was cyber stalking her because he was monitoring all of her activity on Facebook and social media. And how was he doing this? Because he was logging in. It wasn't like he set up a whole pretend profile and he was just like watching who she talking to. No, he was logging into her account and keeping an eye on all of the messaging. Who was she talking to? What were they saying? What was going on? So he was distracting himself with how out of control he felt by cyber stalking Maya because he did not like the feeling of being out of control. And this highlighted how actually out of control his life was without Maya there to control. So he um, was running away from the negative self-worth thoughts and feelings of inadequacy that he was suddenly experiencing again. And to run away from it, he was doing that by monitoring Maya. Now, this was also the only semblance of control that he could maintain over her in the actual absence of her. Now, he was, not only was he watching everything that she was doing on social media, but he even took it a step further. So he told her brother that um, he believed that she was having an affair. And I find this so interesting and I'm actually really gonna, I'm gonna really like pause here and, and make, it, make a statement about this. Because what do weak men do when they lose control of their woman? They call into question her chastity. They will call into their woman's question, their integrity. What better way to make a woman look unchaste, not like, un not like chasing, but like unpure, and to make them look like they don't have any integrity? It's by saying they are cheating on you. It is a smear campaign and it is an effort to paint a woman to be the bad one in the relationship. So this does a few things. First of all, this is going to deflect the attention away from themselves, and it is going to start to um, create aspirations about that person's character. So he was doing this because he didn't want himself to be perceived as the reason that Maya had separated from him. It's not me, it's her. It's the ultimate, it's not, it's the opposite of the ultimate. What do they say? No, it's not you, it's me. This was co literally complete the opposite. It's not me, it's her. She's separating because she's having an affair. Did he even have any evidence of this? Did he have any proof of this? He was saying it as a way to deflect attention away from himself. And it was also a way of deflecting any of the responsibility for the marital discourse that they were having. It's not that we're actually having problems, it's that she's now having an affair. So this is also going to um, illuminate or highlight the lack of uh, foresight that this person actually had. Because let's say they actually did end up working everything out and they ended up getting back together. He's already painted her black to for sure her family. Who else was he saying she's having an affair to? So now all of those people are going to, in one way or another, beginning looking at Maya in a different way, looking at her like there's something wrong with her. 
but he's not thinking it through. He's not thinking, oh, we're going to end up getting back together and then, and then what? All of your friends and family think she was having an affair the whole time. So this really, really shows a lack of the cognitive function that he had in terms of long, long-term planning. Um, and here's the other thing. He was also doing this in an effort to isolate her from her family. Because if he's painting her black to her family and they're thinking, hmm, I wonder if Maya's really having an affair. For a lot of people, that can be like, you know what, you're not the person I thought you were. I'm, I, I can't, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't associate with you. That's just a step too far. So it was really done in, in an effort to either get people to psychologically separate themselves from her, create distance from her, or to even ultimately isolate her in, their, in her entirety, where people were just like, oh no, I, I'm, I'm just, no, no, you're not the person I thought you were with the hopes that that would bear fruit ultimately and she would end up running back to Larry and that he would be her only source of support in the world because all of the other streams of support that she had she had thought she had were turned their back on her. It was diabolical. It was really, really evil. But again, Larry didn't change. Maya was now at version 4.0 Larry was almost at version Larry 0.0 because he had actually in some ways regressed uh, emotionally and energetically by going backwards. He hadn't evolved in the time that they were separated. He had gone backwards. Some unhealed part of himself had been triggered by her leaving, by the separation, which caused him to double down and to become further parts of himself, parts passing, that he was prior to even meeting Maya. Continuation of the incongruencies of these two people energetically. So whereas she had changed, she had evolved, she had matured, he had actually doubled down and he had become more controlling, more abusive. She couldn't stand him. So they did actually end up getting back together for a period of time where she did move back into the house. But it's almost like because he had digressed, is the, I think it's digressed, he had gone energetically backwards and was now in a state of uh, such emotional dysregulation, right? Because he was now not like a 30 year old man he was like back to being maybe like the four or five, six year old child, the version of himself that had been originally so wounded. So a four or five or six year old cannot emotionally regulate themselves. They need the adult to regulate them. So this was just further illuminating to Maya how, oh my God, I really am the fucking parent around here, even to my spouse. So their separating actually brought to the fore even more the original um, problems that were in the relationship where she felt like she was a mommy to her spouse. So the separation did not do them good. Or one could say it actually did do them good because this really illuminated for Maya how completely incongruent they were. They were incongruent before they separated and now that they had gotten back together, they were giving it like one more go. This was really highlighting to Maya all of the original concerns that she had had and recognizing and realizing, wow, she really, really got it at this point. He is not going to change. This is who Larry is. So upon their getting back together, she had actually told Larry that she did want a divorce. And now all of those uncomfortable thoughts and feelings and emotions that he had been trying to run away from when they had separated that caused him to turn around and really double down on controlling her um, and via the cyber, cyber stalking. It was a absolute wave of all of those emotions upon him because now it wasn't just feelings, uh, not just thinking that he was unworthy, it's feeling, oh my God, I'm really fucking unworthy because this woman wants to leave me. So this was causing a 
huge, absolutely huge. Like think of a tidal wave, a tidal wave now of all of those uncomfortable feelings and emotions. He just could not deal with it. He wanted to run away from it. And again, because he was now back to the original wounded version of himself, not, could not emotionally regulate himself at all, he was going to act out. So what I actually saw was that he had um, caused some sort of a blunt force trauma to her head. He had hit her. Oh, here's probably a good time to actually just interject and remind everybody. I'm So this happened in the United States. This happened in actually California. And here in the United States, we have something called a presumption of innocence, which is that somebody is presumed to be innocent until guilty. So he has not, he's actually on trial right now uh, for her murder, even though there's no body. But I'm just going to say that this is, of course, the energy of what I was able to see that happened. Um, he has not fully had his day in court where he got to defend himself. I'm just going to put that out there. But again, this is the energy of what I saw happen. Okay. So he had, again, being emotionally dysregulated, being the, uh, unhealed version of himself, Larry, like 0, 0.0, um, having these un awfully uncomfortable feelings come up around him and acted out just like a child who doesn't get whatever it is that they want is prone to act out. So he actually caused some sort of a blunt force trauma wound to her head. Um, and I saw him packing her up into the car and then taking her out and driving somewhere. But interesting, he actually left his phone at home, which I think is so interesting and notable because go back. If you haven't seen my video on Brian Koberger, homeboy did not leave his phone at home. Um, not when he had gone to the house 13 times or so before. And certainly not on the day that he actually allegedly committed those murders. So they were actually able to track the location of Brian's phone and know that he had visited the location of the house. And they also knew that at the time that these murders were allegedly committed, his phone was like an airplane mode or something. So they couldn't actually even like triangulate the exact location. But for all of Larry's um, childishness, he left his phone at home. So they don't even know where he went. Interesting and notable. Now, I'm also going to tell you that, um, well, I never will read something on the topic I'm looking into prior to actually channeling, because again, I want the information that comes in to be as completely raw and as fil and unfiltered by my own, um, like verbal chatter in my own head or like matching it up with like the known evidence or anything like that. So I won't look into it, but I actually did look into it after I had channeled. This is wild. So he may have actually left his phone at home, but he was reaching out to, um, like, I don't know if like you could say psychics, but he was reaching out to like people that do like spells online. And he was reaching out and he was like asking these people to uh, put spells on Maya that she would fall back in love with him. Um, because, and he's like, my wife wants to leave me, put a spell on her that she won't leave. Um, and then interestingly enough, after she disappeared, he actually reached back out to the people he had uh, paid to put these so-called spells on Maya. And he said, um, I don't know if this is like the exact word he used, but essentially it was like, okay, it's okay. You can actually stop using the spells now. <laughs> it's just, it's comical. It's comical. Okay. So that's probably not going to bode well for him like in court. Um, now, what actually happened um, thereafter when she was loaded up into the car, it was shown to me that he had uh, driven to a remote location. And it's definitely what was shown to me is um, like some sort of a hiking trail, but not like a family friendly hiking trail. It's not like where 
some like 10 year old is going to be hiking and find her. It's a remote desert location, but it's a trail nonetheless, but it's like really, really off the beaten path. And it's not like a trail that has like spectacular views that when you get to the Vista, you're going to be like, Oh wow, it was so worth it. No, no, no. It's more like where you might see like a coyote scrounging around looking for food. It's kind of like where you would see tumbleweeds, things of that nature. So it's a remote desertish kind of location, but it was one that was known to Larry. And he actually took her there. And she had been knocked out by the blunt force uh, trauma to her head. And he was trying to revive her. And he was trying to wake her up. And he did actually revive her. And he wanted to, he was trying to get her to see things from his point of view one last time. Um, but Maya remembered what had happened. So first of all, he fucking hit her over the head. What did he think was gonna happen? She was going to be revived and she would say, oh yes, you're right. It was really hitting me on the head that a loom allowed me to see just how much you actually love me, just how much you don't want to lose me. So at the point that he was able to revive her and he was trying to get her to see things from his point of view one last time, she's remembering the fucking dude just whacked me over the head. Um, and she had said to him, she didn't love him anymore. She didn't want to be with him anymore. And he was, frankly, she said, you're fucking, I don't know if she said fucking, she's like, you're crazy. So he strangled her. And allegedly, he allegedly strangled her. And um, I saw him taking her body and disposing it somewhere in this very, very remote uh, trail where there are coyotes. Um... And this was done intentionally on his part, right? So it was that he had first of all taken her, taken her to this remote location because he didn't want her body to be discovered in the event that it was. Uh, that, actually, that actually made no sense. He didn't want her body to be discovered. Or another way of saying that is that he didn't want her body to be discovered in a way that it would be easy to identify her. That's why it was done in this remote location where there are animals. So not only are there for sure coyotes, but there's like mountain lions and shit. So mm, yummy, tasty dinner. So this was uh, very much done in an effort to conceal the crime and what had been done to her. And also a body being left out in the elements is there's going to be less, less evidence. There's going to be less, um, for forensic evidence. It's going to be subjected to the elements. It's going to be subjected to potential rain. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is somewhere in California in a fucking desert. So I don't really know if it rains there, but it's going to be exposed to all of the elements. There's going to be sand. There's going to be dust. There's going to be the animals. So this was very much done in an effort to conceal the crime. Let's see what else I got here. Yeah, so he had revived her because he wanted to give her one last choice. But even though she was very confused and out of it, uh, disoriented, but she clearly remembered what had happened and told him in no uncertain terms that she did not love him anymore. He was crazy and she wanted a divorce. This triggered the um, manifestation of the childlike uh, behavior of acting out. And he did allegedly kill her.